If you need to store a lot of data on your home network and you're thinking about buying a NAS, maybe you should think about FreeNAS. Today we're going to set up FreeNAS and not the normal way. We're going to actually virtualize FreeNAS in Proxmox. So stick around and I'll show you just how to do that. Hey, welcome back. So today we're going to talk about FreeNAS. So what is FreeNAS? FreeNAS is a free and open source network attached storage operating system. It allows you to store your data on your home network centrally. It's relatively easy to set up. You can install all of this on an old PC that you have, or you can build one with some modest PC specs. So when I started running out of space on my own server, naturally, I looked at FreeNAS. You see, I already virtualize a lot of my servers at home, and I didn't really want to add another server when my current server is more than capable of taking on this workload. So I started to consider virtualizing FreeNAS, and I wondered to myself if that's a common way of installing FreeNAS. So I reached out to someone on YouTube that I knew that had already figured this out. I reached out to Craft Computing and asked him, hey, should I run this bare metal or should I virtualize it? And he responded back that you could do it either way. And he told me if I were to virtualize FreeNAS, I can pass individual drives through or I can pass the entire controller through, which is exactly what I was hoping for. I'd seen other YouTube videos from Level 1 Techs, Gamers Nexus, and Bitwit, where they were buying these large disk arrays and connecting them to their PC. And so that's what I went out and did, and I'll have a video on that later. And so once I got all the hardware connected, it was time to create my FreeNAS virtual machine. Before we get started, you'll have to download FreeNAS and upload it to your server. After that, we can create our virtual machine. So let's create a new virtual machine. We're gonna name this one Andromeda. For the OS, we're gonna keep it as Linux. And we're gonna select our ISO here. For a hard drive, we're gonna select where the hard drive should be created and select the size. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. It's only gonna be running FreeNAS, so I don't need that much space. So I'm gonna make it 20, 20 gigs. Here we'll choose how many cores we're gonna give it. I'm gonna give it 24 for now, but I'll probably scale it down later. As far as memory goes, FreeNAS requires a minimum of eight gigs, but I'm gonna go with double that. For network, it's just gonna be connected to my Linux bridge, and we'll just confirm here. Now it's creating it, and it's created. Now we'll go into hardware and we're gonna add our LSI controller. Because remember, we wanna pass through this card from the host machine to the guest machine so that it sees the LSI adapter and then we'll see all of the hard drives connected to it. So let's click add and PCI device. And here are all the devices I can pass through. It's this LSI logic device right here. Choose that. Let's go into advanced. I'll need to uncheck the ROM bar. Let's click add. Here's our FreeNAS virtual machine. It has 16 gigs of RAM, 24 processors, has a CD drive attached with our FreeNAS OS install. It has a hard drive attached for the OS, which is 20 gigs. It's attached to the network and we pass through our hardware PCI device. So let's start it up. Okay, we're gonna choose install. And here's where we're gonna pick where the OS is installed. It's this drive, the 20 gig one. Proceed with installation, yes. Give it a root password. We're gonna boot via BIOS. And now it's installing the OS. All right, installation is done. I'm gonna hit okay here. We're gonna shut down the system and unmount the CD drive. Let's go into hardware, CD drive. Do not use any media. You probably don't need to do that, but I don't like to keep my CD drives mounted when they're not being used. So let's start it back up. All right, it's booted up for the first time. And it has an IP address, so let's go to the web interface. We went to the IP address, and now we need to sign in. So 
So let's check to see if all of our hard drives were passed through from the LSI controller. Go into storage, go into disks, and we can see some disks here. That's a good sign. Let's create a pool. Add a pool. I'm gonna create a new pool. And I'm looking for seven terabyte drives. There they are, one, two, three, four, five, six. Awesome. So you can see here I passed through the LSI card and the LSI card is presenting all of the disks I have attached to FreeNAS. So I have six eight terabyte drives and four three terabyte drives. It's really all I can afford right now. So I'm gonna create the first pool with my eight terabyte drives. Two, three, four, five, six. Let's name this storage zero. Let's see what they suggest for this. All right, so with all six drives, they're suggesting RAID Z2, which is exactly what I was gonna use. So RAID Z2 is a good choice for me. It's a good trade-off between performance, parity, and capacity. You can see I have six eight terabyte drives, and that gives me a raw capacity of 29 terabytes. That should last me a little bit. So now we can create the pool. I don't need to add a cache drive or add a spare, so we'll just create it. And here we go, our pool's created and it's healthy. 28 terabytes free, awesome. So the only thing left to do now is create some shares and add some data. So let's add a share called pictures. We need to add it to that storage we just created. Save, enable service, share's been created. Now we'll just create a user account that can access this share. Let's go into accounts, users, let's add a new user, techno, techno, that's fine, don't need an email, let's do a password, this looks good, read, write, so if we browse out to this network path, we should see our share, enter our credentials. And there we go. Here's our folder. Create new files. And we're all set. There are so many more things you can do with FreeNAS and plenty of videos on the web. There are tons of plugins for it, like Plex Media Server and many, many others that you can use to set up pretty much anything you want. You may be asking, why did you virtualize this inside of Proxmox when FreeNAS supports virtualization? Really, it all boils down to, I use Proxmox for my hypervisor to virtualize all of my workloads. And plus, things like hardware pass-through make it pretty hard to pass up. And Proxmox has lots of other features that I find myself using all the time. And really, it just boils down to it's my personal preference. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. But if you didn't, you can give it a thumbs down too. It's all good. And if you have a question about this video or any other video, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So hop in my stream and I'd be glad to help you out. So thanks so much for watching. And remember, stream on my friends.